This is another video in our series on the information technology PRAC exam for paper one for grade 12 from November 2021. Uh, we've done question one and two and in this video we're looking at question three which is the OOP question or object question. So yeah we've got the object question question three and it's all about hikers and we have an incomplete class in the hiking trail underscore u so don't forget we need to work on that as well as question three there are two parts normally to oop question first part is working with the object in that particular file and then the second part will be using that object in that file so let's go over. this is what the program looks like and we're not actually going to get to anything here until the second part so i'm going to scroll past and we're going to get to this part and we're going to they tell us that there's an incomplete object t hiking trail which has been provided and it's already uh it's the declaration of five attributes that describe the hiking trail so there's the terrain name there's the terrain type the number of days the distance and the cost per person so you can read all about that there the constructor has been provided so they've already done a constructor for us so we're going to jump straight into question 311 and we need to write an accessor method called get number of days access means we want to get the values for the f number days which means we want to return the number of days so that's a function let's go for that so we're going to return the number of days so let's go to the program so yeah i've got the program open and if you struggle with Uber, one thing that a lot of people for some reason don't know you need to just click on the object that's over there do you see there you don't you're not working in this file yet we are working in the object file so make sure that you double click on the object file you'll see it there it's, it's not the main file it's the next one and that's the one we are working with make sure that you put your examination number there as i said there the properties been done for us so you can look at what their types are and the constructors already done so we're going to create an object or not an object we're going to create a function called get i think it was get number of days number of days was that the the name of the function you can see get number of days which will return the f number of days accesses return the value so we're going to get number of days there's nothing that we need it's just going to return the number of days which you can see over here is an integer so we're going to make this an integer and then we're going to say control shift c and now we are at the point where we write the code for that and we just say result equals f number of days that's the value that we are returning that's our accessor method so that's as simple as it is so let's move on to the next question 3.1.2 we must write a method called calc dist per day which i'm assuming is distance per day so i'm just going to copy that so i can don't have to type it out to calculate and return so we know it's a function return the average number of kilometers that must be completed per day so that would be the distance divided by the number of days okay so that's within the required number of days rounded off to the nearest integer so we need to do some rounding off as well so we are returning the average which is the distance divided by the number of days and then we must make sure we round it off very simple very easy we're going to come here and declare it first so we're going to say okay function and it's going to be called calc dist we might copy it doesn't need any information but it's going to return a integer if i recall because we're rounding it to the nearest whole number so we don't actually need it to be a real even though we are dividing so i'm going to make it an integer and we're going to control shift c and here we are at the code for this particular method and we're going to say result equals and it's the distance per day so we're going to say the f distance we're going to get the distance field and divide that so distance field make sure we type it correctly and we divide that by the number of days f number of days and remember they wanted it to be a or, or integer they wanted us to round it so i'm say round of those values and there we go i think that's correct that looks right so take the distance the number of days of those fields and round it and then return it so let's move on to the next question 3.1.3 this is quite a long question there's 10 marks for it so let's look at it let's be careful and make sure we get all of them write a method called determine level so that's what it's going to be called to determine and return so we see the word return so we know that it's a function the difficulty level of the trail as a string the difficulty level can be advanced moderate or easy and there's a whole bunch of details here to tell us how to work that out so let's first go and declare it to make my life easier we're going to make a function a function called that and it's going to return a string okay control shift c 
So now, what is the code for this particular function? So let's have a look. We're going to calculate and return the distance that must be completed per day. We just did that. So we're going to use this method that we just created in the previous question. And we must call that and return it. Use this value to determine the difficulty value. So I'm going to put that in a variable. It's advanced if the distance per day is more than 15 and the terrain is rocky or sandy. So there is a terrain string which tells us the terrain type so if it's rocky or sandy then and it's 15 then we can say that it's advanced moderate if the distance per day is 10 to 15 and then easy if the difficulty level difficulty level is none of those two options okay so let's go into let's go first of all we go so it must be more than 15 so and rocky or sandy for the advanced so we're going to go here and i'm first going to calculate the average uh this little part here that we did the average or the calculate the distance per day so we're going to make a variable called uh because it's going to be rounded so we can actually make it an integer uh, i'm going to call it r dist p day and that's going to be a type integer because that's going to tell me how what the average distance is per day and we're going to call that calc distance per day just like that and it will return the result into there so that's easy because we're just using that particular method. It's going to work it out, send it back in. Now that we've got that, I need to check if that R dist P day is greater than 15. Does it include 15? It says there if it's more than 15. So it doesn't include 15. So if it's more than 15 and the terrain is rocky or sandy. So, so that is one. And at the same time the f terrain field do you remember the f terrain field i think it's over here f terrain type there we go that field if that is equal to rocky or sandy so f terrain is equal to rocky or the f terrain type equals to sandy okay so i'm going to put this on a new line i'm just going to put this over here so we can see it so those are the two options okay so and we must have brackets around our parameters or our condition sorry whenever you use and and alls you must put brackets around your condition so i'm putting brackets around it i just want to tell you something here quickly because there is a little error here okay i just want you to take note and takes precedence over all so what this is actually doing this is actually wrong it's actually working out those that are more than 15 and that are rocky that's the one option or anyone that is saying it doesn't matter the discipline day because this happens first and then this happens with the or which is wrong we actually want this to happen first so it must be either rocky or sandy and that must go with that so with the distance per day being greater than 15 so this greater than 15 must be for rocky and the greater than 15 must also be for sandy but it must be either one of those so remember and takes precedence so to make sure that this all happens first we're going to put brackets around this part here so it's going to first determine if it's rocky or sandy and if it is rocky or sandy then it'll check if the distance is greater than 15 and that so therefore it'll cover for both the rocky and the sandy options that are above 15 so just remember and takes precedence over all if that is true then we can i think return the word advanced i think that's the word result is equal to the word advanced so that's that's the answer for that else what's the other option else if the distance per day is from 10 to 15 so i'm assuming that's including them then it is moderate so let's go look at the code so if the r dist per day is greater than or equal to 10 and the r dist per day at the same time is less than or equal to 15 you can do that in multiple ways then if it's in that range then we know that it is moderate it doesn't make mention to anything about the terrain type it's just just in that range and then it's moderate so there we go if that's true then i'm just going to copy this part here and paste it here it's easy enough if it's if that's true we're going to say moderate and if it's neither one of those options then the result is going to be easy if i remember correctly else it's easy so there we go okay so the only tricky thing there was to take note of this particular part 
if terrain type is rocky or it's sandy make sure you do that first and then the dist per day must be greater than 50. okay i think that's correct okay it looks like we've done everything so let's move on to the next question so we're going to come over here and 4.1 or 3.1.4 write a method called calculate cost okay so that receives so that's got a parameter the number of hikers in a group as a parameter i'll assume that would be an integer you can't have 1.5 hiker you can't have half a hiker and return the total cost of the group based on the cost per person so i'm assuming it's the cost per person times it by the number or the number of of days which is the per or the number of hikers per parameter but there's also a number of days that they do it so we might have to take that into consideration as well so we'll think about it now let's go declare it so long so we're going to come up here to the top and this is going to be a function because it's returning something but this takes in a parameter the number of hikers so i'm going to make it as a hikers variable of type integer and it's going to return some sort of cost so i'm going to make it a real if that makes sense i think that makes sense so we're going to do that and then i'm going to go control shift c to the code okay so what are we returning okay so we know that we have this many hikers coming from here so i'm going to multiply that by if you look up here the cost per person that's the cost per person okay but if we read the question this is the cost to book the hiking trail per person and does that include per day no i don't think it doesn't mention anything about the number of days that's got separate so i think it's just that it's just a once-off cost so i think that is all that we need so yeah i think that's all that we need i think that's fine okay and then let's go to the next one and we are at the two string well this is normally the last one i think it's the last one before we get to the main program write a two string method so that's normally a function that returns a string that's going to return all the attributes of the object in the following format so it must look like that okay so i don't know if i can copy this i'm going to try to copy this i know obviously in an exam you can't do this copy because you don't have the paper digitally but i'm just doing that to save time so we're going to come here and create another function called to string which will return a string Control shift c and so we want result to equal something that looks like this okay so we want the name of the hiking trail and we're going to get the name of the hiking trail from the trail name i think that's what we're going to get it from so we're going to type take the, the that variable and then we're going to add this colon and then i'm going to add the terrain type so that will be f terrain type and then we're going to have a brand new line so i'm going to put a hash 13 because we want this to be on a new line so and then we want the actual distance which i think is a variable yes the distance variable so we're then going to display the distance variable plus the text kilometers in plus the number of days and that would be f num i think there's f num days f number of days that's the variable we got next that is that that is the variable eh? there, yeah, f number of days yeah we are using the right ones just double checking so then we're going to go f number of days plus the text the days and then i'm going to add another hash 13 because we're going to go into a new line and then we're going to have this part on a brand new line then we're going to have the text cost per person so i'll go cost per person followed by the costs how do we get the costs well i think we had a variable that worked out the calculate costs i think we had one calculate total costs or is that post cost per person that's the cost per person so it's just the once off cost so it's just this variable the cost per person that we're going to come down oh, but the cost per person and this must be formatted as a currency in other words we're using float to string f so i'm going to take this that's just telling us what it looks like so i'm going to say float to string f for this cost per person and what are the parameters we need ff currency and then we're going to do an eight comma two so that's that text okay it's not done yet so this that's a string so i think that's fine that's a string that's fine however distance and number of days are integers so we're going to need to convert that from an integer 
to a string to convert those ones if I remember correctly and the same with this one this is also going to be int to string so that it can fit because remember the whole result must be a string and we add in all these strings together I think that looks fine and just take note if your into string and float to string if doesn't work that means at the top here you need to add sysutils they've already done it but if it's if it doesn't work then you must remember to add sysutils if you need a little hack you can always go to the main program go to the top and go look over here what it was it's normally just remember sysutils and you can do that okay so i think that's done i'm just going to run it to see that it's there's no syntax errors obviously i can't test the logical or the runtime errors uh, i have to actually use it in the main program before i can test that oh, there we go so it all compiles so therefore at least there's no syntax errors there so that's that part done we're going to go to the next part so let's go down to the next part which is working with the object we're now going to work in the question three folder the actual the incomplete program and the it contains an object class and this I think has been declared for us so that's a global variable that we're going to use and let's do three two one so it's so we're going to work with the combo box information on the hiking trails are provided in different text files the name of the hiking trail as provided in the combo box is the same as the name of the text file the extension of all the files is txt dot at the end so the text file contains four lines it's the type of the terrain the distance the number of days and the cost for the booking that's an example the code has been provided to extract the selected hiking trail from the combo box they've done it for us thank you and display the image thank you very much but each time we the name of the hiking trail is selected in the combo box a new object must be instantiated in other words so they ask us to open the text file read that stuff use the information to instantiate the object and display this message okay so there's a few things we need to do let's go to our program we're going to come here to the code and it's the first part is when we click on there you see combo three two one that's when we double click on that that's when we get to this part now as i said as they've said they've done the tr they've extracted the value so s trail will have what we need to do and they've done the image for us we just need to write code here which does those things so which the first thing was open the correct text file now what i've done is i've got an example of a text file over here so you can see the different values you see they're one after each other there there's another one so we've got that already so we're going to do that part first now i don't think it mentions anything about error checking it doesn't say but i'm going to do i always do the error checking for text files just in case because sometimes there are marks allocated so if file exists and what file are we looking for we're looking for that particular file because it's the same name so s trail but it's got a plus a dot txt at the end so it's the full trial so whatever is in that combo box dot txt at the end if that equals false then the text file does not exist so then i'm going to say show message file not found and we're going to exit i know it doesn't say we must do that i'm doing it anyway just to be sure then we're going to assign file and we need a text file variable oh there is one t text file so there we go we're going to assign the t file to this file called strail.txt so whatever's in that variable which it gets from the comment box add a dot txt that's the text file we want to assign okay then we're going to reset it because that's the next set next step sorry next t file and then now i know you'll be tempted to do the while loop but we don't need to because we know over here that it's always four values so i can actually just do a read line four times they have created variables for everything so i can literally just go I don't need to loop I can just go read line from t file and what's the first value the first value if we look at the document here the first value is the terrain so we're just going to put that into the terrain into the terrain variable we've got a terrain I think that s type will be it so let's go into s type so we get the terrain in that case it will be equal to like rocky or whatever it is then we're just going to do this again and we're going to do this actually four times okay so the next thing that we extract if we come look at is the word 100 what does that 100 mean the next thing is the total distance in kilometers so do we have a variable for that r dist so i'm going to use r dist for that 
are just so that will be the hundred and then we're going to read line the next thing which is the total number of days that'll be our num days our num days which in this case would be six and then the next one i think is the cost per person cost of booking per one person so that would be the r cost so we're going to come here and say the next one's r cost which in this case would be 1500 so are you seeing how we extract those four values into those particular variables that's great we've done that part now we need to then go and create this object bring it to life so obj Control spacebar does exist. There it is. There's the hiking trail object because that is globally done. Now be very careful. Do not go dot create. That's not what you do. The creates the one time that is different. You say it's equal to what type of object is it? It's a T hiking something. A T hiking trail. If you're not just sure, you can look at your object and look at what it is there. A T hiking trail dot create. That's the trick. That's the only time that you do it like that. After that, you go OBJ hiking trail dot and all the other methods. So we need the trail name, which I think we got from S trail. So I'm going to give it S trail. What else do we need? What are the other options? Okay. It went away. So let's look here for the create trail name, then the terrain type, which in this case would be S type. We want that word rocky. And then after that, what do we want? We want the number of days. That would be our, our number of days. That's the next parameter. See, I'm just referring to this at the moment. Number of days, then the distance, and then the cost. Did you see that? Do you see that? It's the number of days, then the distance. You must do the parameters in the right order. The number, number of days, then the distance, then the cost. So then we want the distance, r distance, and then we want the r cost. Okay, so that's instantiating the object. I'm just going to have to double check those file types when we test it, but let's go to the next step. Let's go double check. Over here it says once it's done all that, we must display this message. Okay, so first of all, take note of this message. What does that look like? That's not a show message. That's not an input box. That is a message DLG. That looks like it's the confirmation one, I think it is, or the information. I think that's the information one. So we want a message DLG. Do you, you remember message DLG? So once that's done, we need to say message DLG. And what do we need? We need the text that we are going to display. What are we displaying? We are displaying object has been instantiated. So let's type that object has been instantiated. I don't even know how to spell that. Instantiated. Hopefully that's correct. That's the first parameter. The next parameter is the type of in, or message DLG it is. It's normally empty something. So you can go empty and control spacebar and you get all the different options available. So there's an empty error. There's an empty warning. Oh, you, you see, I'm looking at this part. I think it's an information one. So I'm going to use the information one. You don't even need to put that all there. I think you can just put empty information. It will work. So empty information. Then you need to say what buttons you want. And then normally MB with the name of the button. Let's look. There's just an OK button. Just one of them. So I'm just going to come here and go MB OK. And you normally put that in square brackets. Just in case you've got lots of buttons. You can simply put them by commas. Then I just put a zero at the end. And I think that'll be enough for my message DLG. Now I'm going to run this and see if it works. We're just going to double check if the text file reads those values into those variables correctly. There might be an issue over here, but we'll test it out. Okay, there we go. Compiled nicely. So let's try test one. Let's try that. It says object has been instantiated. And we click OK. And I think it's worked. There hasn't been any errors. It looks like it's gone all through. So there we go. It looks like it's worked. It's compiled everything. It's created it. It would have kicked up an error if there was. We'll come back to it if there are any errors. So let's go to the next question. So the next question, that was nice eight marks. Uh, write code to use the two string method to display the object's information. So display it like that. That's, that's just using the two string method. That's quite easy. It's only two marks. So that makes sense. So we're going to do that. So we're going to come here to the next button which is the display i think it's down here there, there we go display of the hiking trail so let's first clear it we want to display it in here so that's red so so let's go red let's first clear what's ever in there red yeah we want the q322 dot clear 
and then the rich edit q32.lines.add what are we adding we're adding that obj hiking trail dot with the two string function two string function just call it as it is and it should display everything let's test it so we first got to go through all the steps you can't just use it obviously because it's not enabled but if we do amatola hiking trail that's been instantiated we click on it and there's the data does it match the data that we've got here let's have a look there we go it looks like it's working perfectly fantastic that's exactly what we want and if i clicked another one it would instantiate it and then we can play and display that particular one okay or maybe you want to put spaces on either side of that that's probably the one change i would make or put a space after the, the colon so that's the one little correction i would make here to the two string if i come here to the two string i would just put a space after that so but i don't think it's a, it's a major deal but there, we can do that and three two three we must use an input box to enter the number of hikers in the group and use the calculate costs to assign the cost for the group to the provided cost variable so they've given us a cost variable and then i assume we just display it the example of output is we must display it in there whatever that is we'll look at what that is so let's come here so i'm assuming the cost will be in this panel in the caption of that panel so let's double click on this so the first thing they've given us a cost variable so we first need to prompt the user for the number of hikers so ah uh, hikers of type integer so we're going to prompt them uh, hikers equals to an input box and they gave me an example of an input box i think so enter number of people and there's nothing else after that so just the top bit is going to be enter enter number of people and i always put a value straight away in there so that it's easier for me to test it so i don't have to keep typing it but that's so that's what i do by default so the last value i put in the value that i want but just remember what does the input box return it returns a string and this is a integer so we convert from a string to an integer after the input box has completed so that it fits into the r hackers and then we can say in the r cost variable that's going to be obj hiking trail dot calculate total cost and we need to give it the number of hikers which we've got now because the, we, the user gave it to us here yeah. it's just convenient that i've named it the same variable and then we must display it in that panel to like two decimal places as currency so we're going to say that panel pnl i think that's three oh, is it that one i don't know i don't think it's that one let's just double check it's that panel panel oh, well it says three two four so i'm assuming it's three two four three two four we're going to make that into it should be three two three because that's the question we're on but anyway so that panels dot caption is equal to whatever our cost is but we want to display it as a currency so float to string f what is it our cost followed by ff currency do i spell that correctly comma eight comma two okay do i spell it incorrect let's test it remember we've got to go through all the steps so we go we're going to select one okay we're going to display it now they told me to test it for the amatola if we've got seven people which is what we're going to use so when i click on here on display cost we're going to put seven people and we get the same results so there we go we're on track last question we're nearly there last question last question how many marks three marks okay so let's have a look write code to use the objects methods and display the difficulty level and recommended distance per day in the following format you have to cover oh, so we gotta write all that text okay does everyone see the text so we gotta write all that text so i'm gonna copy it luckily i can do that you would have to type it out manually and we would need the distance per day and the difficulty level from our methods that we've used so far so let's come over here calculate distance today we're going to be using this rich edit so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to say the rich edit q324 we're going to clear it and then the rich q34.lines.add and we're going to add the text that looks like this i'm going to put control and paste it so that's all the text Ooh, it's a long piece of text here so you have to cover the distance and where do we get the 
this we get that value so we're going to go out of string mode into delphi mode and we're going to get that from the object obj hiking trail what property that was i've forgotten what it was it's the distance per day so the distance per day which one are we using we are using the function we said calc distance per day which is an integer so remember that so we're going to go calc distance per day so we can use that one so there we go and then i'm going to put another plus sign and then we go back into string mode to do the rest of the string okay does everyone see that and then we're going to get to here i'm actually going to do this so we can see what it looks like bit by bit then we're going to add that and then i'm going to put another little let's close the string and go add another string where we're going to put the difficulty level where do we get the difficulty level from that is from obj hiking trail dot difficulty determined level determined level that was the string i think it was and then we're going to put a plus and then put the rest of the string there and then we're going to have another variable the number of days where do we get number of days from that's going to be obj hiking trail dot number get number of days that's the integer there plus another string which is going to be the days. so you see how we, we we use the raw text as it is with quotes around it and then the values we wanted we went and got the object dot that particular field now let's just make sure this whole thing has to be a string the whole thing so let's make sure we've got a string calculate display if you remember correctly calculate display is an integer so we need to convert this whole thing from a int to a string so that it fits inside of this memo control this rich edit that's being displayed does anyone see that so i'm just doing that so we can see that then we've got this that's a string the determine level determine level is a string so we can leave that as it is and the get number of days get number of days is also an integer so this needs to be converted from an int to a string get number of days okay does that make sense so let's see and test it so we're just going to do that let's run it overall it's a very relatively easy question it wasn't too too difficult so we select that one thank you we're going to display it yes we're going to calculate the cost for seven hikers fantastic and then calculate the distance and what did they say do let's test it so a Matolo hiking trial it's 17 hiking trial for seven days six days do we get the same result and it is advanced that is correct and then th this one is the rim of africa so let's try that one let's go select the rim of africa there we go we can just go through everything i'm just going to do everything exactly the same let's go calculate so that's 11 56 days and moderate 11 56 moderate and it's exactly like it is uh, the only thing i would change do you notice that they've got capital letters so i would then go over here back to my object and just make sure that this determined level is in capital letters so it didn't weren't very specific i suppose maybe i didn't read it properly moderate and easy so the other thing i would do just once you've done the question if you've got time i would do this so take all these functions that you've got even the ones they gave you and just double check i'm going to put them over here at the bottom so let's go at the bottom here somewhere i'm going to put them over here okay first of all ask myself did we use the con the create yes we did right at the top we used the create we did use that one so we definitely used the create so create was ticked off so we've done that one tick done so i'm gonna put a, a v there to say it's been ticked the get number of days the last one yeah we got get number of days determined level calculate cost so we did three there that included get number of days calculate costs per day was that there was that there calculate cost per day and determined level so we did that one then did we use the calculate total costs calculate total cost did we do that one there's calculate total cost with the number of hikers we did use that one that is correct so we used that one and we also used the two string yes we did so we did use all the functions they would never ask you to create a function or give you a function or procedure unless they expect you to use it so make sure that you've used all of them if you've missed one out that means you've left something out somewhere okay so there we go i think it's done that is question three the oop question now we get to the difficult one question four good luck with that the video description has links to all the other videos in the series as well as going to our playlist to see other videos that could help you and support the channel by clicking on that subscribe button. 
And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.